Hey, what's up, gamers? Aquilon here, of course. Welcome back to each and every one of you. I want to start off by saying you do not despise the games media nearly enough. Like, not even close. However much you think you despise them, you should be despising them at least a hundred times more than what you are. Make no mistake, I am not suggesting that a good games media isn't important. I'm not necessarily saying that it should die out as a medium, because I understand that they are required. But I think the current iteration of games media absolutely needs to die out. It has become an effectively a propaganda tool. It has become a left-wing political propaganda tool that is used to great effect against its enemies so anyone who doesn't play the role anyone who doesn't play the part anyone who dares to go against the conventional wisdom is immediately attacked and dragged as a result of the game's media now it is important to understand why i think the media is important we need a media that is able to do the things that normal youtubers simply cannot i don't have the resources to get an entire team of researchers together and we're talking about investigative journalists people that i can send out and pay to go and find the dirt I, I don't have the time for that and even if i did have the time for that even if i did have the resources for that i'm not entirely sure how i would even go about this it's not something that i studied for i can make videos and i have opinions and i like to share those opinions but there are people who very much like diving into the weeds on things and that's where journalism really comes in and plays a phenomenal part and i think where youtubers come in is being able to amplify the things that are found by these journalists but what do you do when you have a journalistic corporation effectively or a movement that has become so captured by its own politics that it is simply incapable of finding the stories that actually matter and instead, they are found downgrading and downranking games, not because the games are bad, not because the games aren't absolutely phenomenal in what they do. No, 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 because the games are not diverse enough. The games do not feature diverse sets of characters, and as a result of that, the game has to lose a couple of points. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Black, uh, Black Myth Wukong. It's a game that's coming out very soon, and a lot of people are incredibly hyped for this game. I would like to show you just one of the reviews. Now, what's come out in the recent, uh, in the recent, in the past few weeks, is that a lot of the publications, uh, like IGN, like Screen Rant, like Game Reviewers, uh, they all sh uh, score the game in China five out of five, ten out of ten, nine out of ten, like really high scores. But then, when you read the Western edition of those reviews, so the same company, just the Western one, it will always be about one or two points lower than the Chinese one, and every single time it comes with lack of inclusivity, uh, inclusivity and diversity as one of the cons for the game. Now, I have no problem with saying game performance is unpolished. Remember, you are playing an early version of the game, so it probably not yet optimized fully, um, but fundamentally, the whole lacking in inclusivity, look, this is a game about Chinese culture and Chinese myth. What kind of diversity and inclusivity do you want from this game? Now, if you follow any of these media companies online, you will very quickly learn that what they want uh, would be more female representation, more gay representation, more uh, left-wing uh, representation. And that is completely missing from the story. It's not really weird, if, if anything, if you read or know anything about the mythology of uh, Wukong, the Monkey King, you'll understand why none of those things would be included. This is a story from like the early days of the Chinese Empire, right? Uh, this is like super old. And of course, they're not going to have any of those things included in the story because culturally, it was never about that. Not to mention the fact that these developers literally just wanted to make a game 
that celebrates Chinese culture. And unlike Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed Shadow, they weren't interested in inventing new people and races around China at the time. Of course, for the modern day media, this is just a completely unacceptable decision. What's more, the developer or the, the journalist that have probably done more harm than anyone else is a journalist by the name of Samar Abedian. Samar Abedian goes on to write for Screen Rant, and she writes just one of the most ridiculous pieces you've ever read in your entire life. She uses information from an IGN report that was written last year that completely mistranslated uh, a, an official statement by the company uh, Game Science and basically makes it out to seem like the developers that work for Game Science and the people that own Game Science are just misogynistic, evil, uh, you know, kids and 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 men just that hate women. The problem, of course, is that uh, we have a video here from a girl who is from China. Now, I've watched the entire video. You can do so as well. I'll have a link for you in the description down below. I've listened to this video, and she does have criticisms for the game. She has criticisms for uh, Chinese culture and the, the Chinese gaming culture. So based on at least now, I, I know, I know what a lot of you will say almost immediately. Look, Akalon, one thing is very true. When you see Chinese people on YouTube, they're usually CCP propaganda. You might be right, but usually that propaganda does not involve criticizing China in any way, shape, or form. She does criticize the Chinese gaming industry quite significantly, but she does stand up for the company and she does explain what the company actually said and what those words were. One of the first things that IGN points out in their article, this was last year, is that the company was on record as saying they don't need female gamers. She then explains, well, actually, that's not what they meant. If you understood Chinese and you understand or you understood the culture in China at the time, what companies would do is they would use the female numbers of their games to try and get more men to play the game. So uh, she uses the example of World of Warcraft. If World of Warcraft suddenly started putting out uh, sort of characters and game modes to increase the amount of women that play the game, so suddenly you have 60 or 70% of the player base that is women, World of Warcraft would then come out, or Blizzard would then come out, and market the game as, hey, we have 70% of our players are female, come to World of Warcraft to meet your wife today. Apparently, this is what Chinese companies or game developers were doing at the time. When they had more females than males playing the game, they would use these female numbers as a way to say, come play our game, you might meet your wife here. And she says, at least, and this is according to her, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because I don't speak Chinese. She says that's what the developer was referring to when he said, we don't need female gamers. He wasn't saying that they don't want females to play the game. He was simply saying, we don't need these tactics. Uh, we don't need to entice people to play the game by saying we have X amount of female gamers or Y amount of female gamers. IGA never even includes the possibility of this, nor do they include that story, of course, because it wouldn't fit uh, the mantra of what IGN is trying to uh, get behind. And then, of course, they also accuse them of misogynistic, sexist remarks, because one of the lines that the developer used was taken completely out of context, where he he's talking about what they wanted to do with the first Black Wukong, uh, Black Myth uh, Wukong video was to say uh, they wanted to get more people involved in the company. So they wanted to showcase this video in the hopes that more talent would join the studio so that they could ultimately finish this game. What they didn't expect was that the, 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 the trailer was going to do as well as it did, and they got flooded with people who wanted to work for the company, and he used uh, a Chinese saying that basically, uh, I think in English translates to something like, uh, I, I got licked on my balls and some shit like that, like some weird kind of saying. And in China, Chinese people would accept this to mean it got a lot more traction than I expected. And I I felt uncomfortable with just as many, the amount of people that, that wanted to be part of this game. Uh, at least according to her, it's a very crude way of putting it, but it is accepted people in China would fully understand what he said. Maybe I have Chinese viewers that could uh, provide some clarity on this. But yeah, fundamentally, 
IGN again just runs with a story and makes them out to be the worst possible people on the planet. Now, of course, remember what I told you about Samar Abedian. Samar Abedian is the one that writes uh, the article, the original article at, re at least, for Screen Rant. And in the article for Screen Rant, uh, she is eventually removed as the lead writer for the show. Uh, basically, uh, you can see it here. I'll show you. Uh, this is her. It's by Samar Abedian. And then, very quickly, Screen Rant removes her name from the article and says, by Screen Rant team. So they change that around. Why do they do this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is because she is actually linked to a PR firm. Firm, The PR firm or the PR consultancy group, Splendid Communications, uh, they're absolutely up to their eyeballs in e uh, DEI. Uh, of course, equity, diversity, and inclusion. It's all about that. And she writes this article very much criticizing the game for not being inclusive, not having any diversity. Lo and behold, it is a Chinese game set in Imperial China. Mythology, but it's not diverse enough. It doesn't have enough inclusion and obviously equity. No one can actually define, so who gives a crap? Uh, but very quickly, they remove her. I mean, you know, as things turn out, she also then goes on to remove her LinkedIn page. She basically disappears from the internet entirely and screen rant is running protection for her now basically trying to get her off of the mainstream as quickly as possible because obviously obviously you're gonna write an article like this you're gonna have youtubers that start to dig you're gonna have youtubers that go hold on why would you write this article specifically in the way that you're doing when this has nothing to do with you this isn't a Western production. If you want to screw up Western games, please keep going. Now, to be clear, the other problem that I have with this is this is clearly being used as a blackmailing technique. That is why you're seeing all of the games media just absolutely united on this front. What they're doing is they're sending a message to any pers prospective developers in the future. Either you play by our rules and you do the whole diversity thing, you do the whole inclusive thing, or we ruin you. Because they have gone now after this new uh, game science with everything they've got. They have thrown everything and the kitchen sink at, these com at this company to try and really harm the game. They don't want this game to do well. Fundamentally, my biggest problem with this is just this narcissistic need for representation. This idea that I need to be represented in every single game and that there is just no way that anyone will ever play a game unless they feel represented in it. And I am here as a fat fucking guy thinking to myself, well, the last thing I want to play in a game is a fat fucking guy. I, I don't want to play as the fat character that can barely run 10 yards before he's out of breath. And, you know, if, if a fight lasts more than 15 seconds, he's just completely winded and falls over and it's the end of the game. Why would I want to play that? Of course, that's not how they would market it. They would market the fat guy as the strongest character, even though that is obviously not true. But never mind that, you know, they, they want all these weird representation stuff. And I just keep, I can't help but think, that to most normal people, these things do not matter. Most normal people do not look at a game and go, well, why am I not represented? If that is how you approach games, then I have fucking bad news for you with something like Black Myth Wukong. It's a monkey king, right? The, 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 the protagonist is a monkey. I don't know about you, but that doesn't represent anyone I know. So fundamentally... This is a problem. Not to mention the fact that you can already see in your mind's eye how these articles would have been written had they made the lead character gay or had they made the lead character female. Then suddenly it would be, oh shit, they think all women are monkeys or they think all gay people are monkeys. You, 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 you know where I'm going with this. No matter what these guys do, they would have been in trouble because fundamentally the games media isn't interested in sincerity. They're not interested in reporting the actual news. What they're interested in is pushing the political envelope. They are interested in 
every single game from every single company must be as woke and as left-wing as is humanly possible. If you're just interested in making a good game, you're shit out of luck. They're not interested in covering that. They're not interested in good games. In fact, and we see this more often nowadays, games that are not good will be praised for their diversity and their inclusion even when the game isn't selling. Even when the game isn't doing well, they'll praise them on that front. They'll keep pushing this nonsense because that is what they want to see. They don't care that the gaming industry is dying and that more and more companies are going bankrupt. We just saw it. Ubisoft is laying people off left, right, and center, and they're probably going to lay off even more people because Ubisoft is another one of those companies that have absolutely bought in to the DEI stuff. And what Ubisoft is learning the same way as everyone else is that um, actually these things don't sell. The average gamer does not actually care because we see this from companies who don't give a shit. They just don't give a shit. Now, it should be mentioned that this company isn't completely innocent. Uh, and I will always be fair. And I will always say exactly what I think. Now, there are two ways to read this. There are two ways to look at this story. The first is to say that this company and the studio really just didn't want to be involved in any sort of political nonsense. They wanted people to cover the game, look at the game, make videos about the game, but under no circumstances must it become political. So they say, do's and don'ts. Do's, enjoy the game. That's good. A good start. Don'ts, do not insult any other influencers or players. Do not use any offensive language or humor. Do not include politics, violence, nudity, feminist propaganda, do like that, fetishization, and any or and other content that instigates negative discourse. Do not use trigger words such as quarantine or isolation or COVID-19. Do not discuss content related to China's games industry, policies, opinions, news, etc. Now, I need to be very clear on this. This is the notice that they sent out to early reviewers. This is not them saying to players that they are not allowed to discuss these things. It is to early developers, uh, to early reviewers. This is not outside the norm. There are a lot of games that I get sent keys for because they want me to play it on stream, and these are pretty standard things. They don't want none of them have ever said to me, "Don't discuss quarantine, isolation, and COVID nineteen." or the Chinese gaming industry, but then again, I've never received an actual game from China, but they do usually say, we don't want political discussions, we don't want you to talk about feminism or anything else, we just want you to play our game, right? And this is because they don't want to be involved in controversies that they themselves did not create. Of course, they're shit out of luck because they've been dragged into controversies, whether they've created them or not. Now, this has been confirmed. Uh, Paul Tassi reached out to reviewers and he confirmed that the gamer was correct. This has been sent out to all others. I needed to bring it to you so that you know all sides to the story. But fundamentally, like I said, this isn't new. All companies will have a do's and don'ts list of the things that you are and are not allowed to say. What I do like is that they don't include anywhere here that you're not allowed to criticize the game, that you're not allowed to say that the game isn't good. They're just asking you to keep you know, to keep it about the game, effectively. If you're going to talk about anything, talk about the game. Don't talk about any of the other bullshit around it. And I do like the fact that they don't want things to be political, even though people might actually suggest there that by them sort of forcing you not to become political, that in itself might be a political stance. But I don't know. I, I prefer my game reviews to be not political. Just tell me what the game is about and tell me if it's good or not. I don't know. I haven't received a copy of this game, obviously. So I, I can't tell you if it's good or not. I can only tell you that I am looking forward to playing it now more than ever since the games media has completely turned on this company. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of Black Myth Wukong. Are you going to play it? Are you not going to play it? What's your take on the games media and their nonsense? Let me know in the comment section down below. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, hit the like if you like, dislike if you didn't, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace.